What's going on guys, Victor here. So for the next 72 hours, Brookie and I took a road trip up north to Sebastian Inlet, and we're gonna try to get on in as many species as possible. Flounder, sheep's head, black drum, uh, red drum, snook and everything. The first thing for any successful fishing trip is getting bait, so let's get to it. We got shrimp, oh, that's like the prime size right there. We got shrimp for the smaller flounder, but the big flounder, from what I hear, really key in on finger mullet. I know who also want your mullet, those guys. And these birds aren't even afraid of us either. They are ugly. They are really ugly. All right, guys, we got a solid throw of the hard. Look at them follow you. Oh, oh they want them. <laughs> Go away. Oh, oh they want them. No, no, these are ours. These are good size oh, ours. Oh, baby. For a uh, flounder. Heck yeah. I got some pilchards too mixed in. Victor just got a good throw. We got some nice maharas for our flounder bait. Right there. Oh, awesome. Yeah. You get it? Look at him fighting. Oh, yeah, he got it. Oh. Oh, I don't think he got it. No? I don't think he got it. If you guys know what these birds are, comment below because I've never ever in my life seen them. But they look cool. They got like a They're... buzzard head, like a ugly buzzard head, and then they look like an egret, like <laughs> body. I don't know. They look just mean. They don't look nice. Like their face is just really mean looking. Oh baby, we got them. All right, that was the best throw yet, and I could barely see him. So the way I'm finding these pilchards is they like to come up top, and I don't know what they're doing, if they're feeding or they're just blowing bubbles, but they have a dead giveaway when they come up top, and you can see their air bubbles. And I just saw one or two, but obviously the whole school was underneath. These are some good sized ones. Look at this one. That is a nice pilchard. That's a doormat bait. I'm sure you guys can hear that really, really strong wind. That is a cold front we're getting right now in Florida. And you can kind of see how the clouds are. Just real, real dense and gray, and it's just real cold fronty weather, which is good though, because in the particular location we're at, it really fires up the fish, whether it be flounder, bluefish, redfish, snook. A lot of the fish here are really triggered by cold fronts, a lot of the bait migrations, the shrimp, the pinfish that flush out the inlet. So what we're gonna do is, we got the bait. Brookie and I are trying to get on some doormat flounder today. Now, I don't know why, but lately I've just had this obsession with trying to catch flounder. I love the way they taste. Brooke made an awesome dish the other day. So I'm gonna rig up and show you guys how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna do like a foot and a half, two feet of 30 pound top shot and then 20 pound lead. We got 30 pound bull buster fluorocarbon. So this is my hook of choice. I'm going with a Mustad 1.0 beak hook because we don't have really have big baits. We have some live shrimp and some pilchards and everything we're fishing is pretty small. So that'll do. We need two swivels and we need one ounce egg sinkers. Let's get to it. Then we got 20 pound bull buster fluoro for our leader. Just like that, no more than a foot of leader. Oh yes, nice little greenie. Right through the nose. I'm using the first. Okay. I went with the pilchard first. Oh, Brooke, look, watch this. Ready? Yeah, that's one. Is it a flounder though? Oh, yeah. You! Number one. First one of the trip. And guess what? Didn't even get snagged. The three spot. Man, they chewed the greenie up. I forgot how hard these things are as I unhook. Good job, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. Number one, we gotta check to see if it's legal. Well, I can't complain. First bait, first fish, and it was a keeper. Not very big, but it'll do, it'll eat. And these fish aren't very far offshore either. They're like 10, 15, 20 feet right there. Just chilling on the rocks, waiting for things to ambush. Yeah, I didn't even know this one was on. This one feels around the same size. Now this one's a little bit bigger, Brooke. This one's probably 14. Man, they do not hit it very hard. And half the time, you don't even know they're on. Man, he's got lockjaw. They do not want to open their mouth. There we go. Yeah, I rinse him off. He's all sandy. Keeper number two going in the cooler. Nice 14 inch fish. It's tricky because you don't really know when to set the hook on them. You think that they're on there, but they just go back down into their hole and sit there. There it is. 
There we go, three for three. Oh, a better one. Yeah, d every single one's been bigger and bigger, isn't it? This one's like 15 now. Man, they are chewing the pilchards today. Look at that one. That's a beautiful one. They got some pretty big mouths. So there's the third fish. Oh, almost lost them. Third fish, probably right around 15 inches and every single one's been bigger and bigger. First one was right around 12 and a half. Then 14, this one's right around 15. And they are sick. All right, let's try to get on number four. So the way I'm fishing this is the reason you have such a short leader is because you're fishing around rocks. The flounder are kind of sitting in and around ambush stuff. You don't want a long leader or your bait just going everywhere. We're not casting very far, but like maybe 30 feet at the most. And uh, they kind of just sitting here on the bank and just waiting for things to flow by, whether it be shrimp or pilchards or mullet. You're not really fishing your bait statically either. Every once in a while, you'll move it and try to get it to go over their heads. That's why I'm not fishing a ton of weight. It's only one ounce. It's, you know, easily going through the current. So every like 15, 20 seconds, I'll reel in a little bit uh, just to get it in a different area where the flounder might be. See if it'll go right past their head. And you do get stuck a lot. And sometimes you get it back. Oh yeah, I got bit as soon as it hit the water. That was a ferocious thump. Pretty sure I got a fish on. Oh yeah. Yep, as soon as it hit the water, it got thumped. Feels good. Oh, well, I think it's gonna be the biggest one of the day. Oh yeah, it's a good one. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. Oh, oh my gosh. Brooke, good one, good one. Real good one. No, 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 no. Oh, baby. Now that's a good one. Look at this thing, guys. Ah, don't go that way. I almost lost them. Now I see why people bring nets. Check out the size of that. Now that is what I came here for. As soon as it hit the water. Woo! I gotta go show Brooke. My biggest flounder ever. Look at this thing. That's gotta be a solid four or five pounder on a greenie, guys. Oh. Babe, as soon as it hit the water. Four, I'd say between four and five, right? That was on a greenie. Look at this. <laughs> hey, this is actually the guy who told me everything I know, my very limited knowledge about flounder fishing and at work. That's a score, bro. Hell yeah. He's pretty thick too. She might be closer to six. Really? Yeah. So it's a just bigger old Southern, right? That's a Southern, yeah. I got it right to the rocks too. Did and now I know why too? people, oh, as soon as, I, I was the biggest greenie in the well. As soon as it hit the water, don't. So that's a nice fish, bro. Yes. Nice Five one. Five to six pounds. So very stoked. Fourth one of the day. Right Every with... single one we've caught today has been bigger and bigger. Let's keep it going. Oh, I think I'm on. Oh, I pulled it out of its mouth. It was on. Oh yeah, watch this. Ready? I'm on. Is it? Nothing compared to the one before. Probably in 13 to 14 inch range. Can't steal my spot. Oh yeah, I got the thump. So now it's like you decide whether or not you want to slowly reel in because you think he's on there. I think a lot of times they drop it. Oh. Oh yeah, you can tell. Look at the pilchard. See, he's all scaled up. You can tell that he's been inside something's mouth. Oh yeah, here we go, here we go. Yeah. School's in session, we got the little ones. Oh, that's the baby. Yeah, he's definitely not keeper. I wanna talk about a fish that's hard to hold. See how they jolt right for the rocks as soon as you let them go? Oh, there was a bite. Did you get thumped already? 
Oh yeah, dude, it's been instant. This was on a Mahara too. Are you throwing it out a long way or no? Right at that dark rock. It's, it's like scattered rocks. Yeah, yeah, that's a bike. They caught a couple. Two I saw a couple Look at this. On the that's a good one. Oh yeah. I'm gonna need your net. Part of my line's here. Where are you at? Remember, drag him into it. Did he pump that Mahara? Like yeah. immediately? As soon as it hit the water. That's man. another 5.6 dude. That's bigger than your first one. Oh, that's bigger than his other one. Guys, don't understand. Two in one day. That is insane. I thought my first one was big and I was stoked to get my biggest one, which was my first one. And then I pulled up this doormat right here. Did he just come unhooked? Yeah, he just came unhooked. I think the hook might be in his mouth. Let's get all this stuff off him. Look at that. That is a beautiful fish. Look at that thing. Solid. There's going to be some nice fillets on here. I am so so excited. Me and Brooke, me and Brooke woke up at four o'clock this morning and we knew we had to catch bait. We got the right bait. We came out here. We've been plucking along and I had to catch like a dozen 12 inch fish to get this one, but man, was it worth it. Quality. So sick. All right guys. So for this giant flounder, I've decided to make it stuffed, which is something I've never done before, but I'm very excited to do. I got this scaler right here and flounder don't have too big of scales not like a snapper and their skin is edible and should be tasty from what I hear. So the first thing we're going to do is knock off all these scales. Okay. Now the exact same thing on the other side. And I don't think, well, I guess the scales are going to be the same. I don't know why they wouldn't be. Yeah, they're the same. I'm gonna start over here, find the head meat of the flounder and see where it, where it kind of ends. Right by his pec fin here, through his guts. I'm gonna go all the way through. Go right through his backbone. There we go. So we got his head off. Here's all his innards. Okay, let's get rid of the inside guts. Brooke and I have both noticed is that flounder are not very bloody. Firm hold on my flounder, and the way I'm gonna do it is this top half of the section, we're gonna fillet from the inside out, bring these two quarters out this way. So we're gonna find his midsection, and I'm gonna take my knife, go down to the backbone, separating it, but not going through the backbone all the way. So like that. So I'm using my right hand to fillet and to separate the uh, flesh from the bone and then my other hand to kind of lift up that way I have uh, the leverage is working for me. And really carefully making sure I don't go through the backbone. This is definitely something you don't want to muscle and definitely have patience. So then once you get it up enough, you can kind of fillet it more normally and run it flat along it and that's what it should look like. It shouldn't be really missing meat. Okay and then I don't want to go too much through because we are gonna keep it attached. We want the these two all four quarters to be attached and just remove the bone in the middle. So I got that out there and now it should be easier to fillet this side. So if you look from the top up, these are our two quarters from the top of the fish. You open it up and then here's the backbone. So now we got to work to get our backbone out of the fish. What we got to do is remove the bottom portion of the fish from the backbone. So I'm going to go from underneath and making contact with my knife. And you can actually see the knife right there along the backbone, making sure I'm making contact with it. And then so once I get uh, for, far enough in there to where I don't really want to put my knife in there anymore. I'm going to take my scissors right here and cut along 
the outside of the bone because now we should have it separated from the bottom portion. We can do the same thing on the other side. Look at that. That's just all bone right there. We're getting rid of all the bad stuff and we're gonna keep all the good stuff. So this is what it looks like. At one point this was a flounder. Now we got the four quarters of our fish, the bottom uh, portion, the belly portion, and then the top portion. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a really good stuffing. Pretty much everything's gonna be edible, except along here you have some bones at the outer edge of the fish. Everything is gonna be absolutely delicious and I'm very excited to try. Voiceover Vic coming back at you guys with another voiceover. So let's get started on our crab meat stuffing. The first thing we're going to be using is lump blue crab meat, which I picked up at a local seafood market. We got an Italian blend of shredded cheese, ricotta cheese, Ritz crackers, basil, and then scallions. So the first thing we got to do is chop up our herbs, mix our crab meat into the bowl, and just kind of blend it all together. I also added some lemon zest to our crab mixture, and as far as the consistency goes, I didn't want it to be too fine. I wanted to, you know, really be able to taste that lump crab meat in there still. Now it's time to stuff our flounder. I just have a glass baking dish, just big enough so that the flounder would fit in it. And I've keep in mind, I've never done this before, so I just kind of went for it. Looking back at this recipe, I would have only changed one thing, and that is to use a smaller flounder. Not to say that it didn't come out great, it was really good and everybody liked it, but I think I would have rather used two smaller flounder and it would have just come out a little bit better. Just some finishing touches, we're going to salt and pepper the insides of the top half of the filet as well as add some Old Bay because Old Bay just goes so good with seafood and so good with crab right on top of our crab mixture. Fold it up into the oven he goes at about I did 375 and then I turned it up to 400 actually and it cooked for around an hour just because it was a really thick piece of fish and like I said that's why I think I would like to have used a smaller flounder for this, garnish it with some lemon and in it goes. For our side dish, real simple, just cutting up some grape tomatoes directly in half, going to dice an onion. While our onions are going, I got some orzo pasta right here going into boiling water. That's going to be our starch for our dish. And add our grape tomatoes into our onion mixture after they have browned up and sweated nicely. And then I like to put a little bit of that starchy water into our tomato onion mixture just to give the orzo pasta a little bit of juice at the very end. And I also added the leftover basil that I did have. Salt, pepper, put our orzo back into that mixture and then finish it off with some butter. So we're gonna dish it up. And I've never done this before, so we're just gonna play by ear. Just give everyone a little bit of fish, a little bit of the crab stuffing. All right guys, dinner's over and I gotta give a huge shout out to Fisher for two things. 
Because what did you do today? I graduated from college. And what else? And um, I'm I'm on YouTube now. I'm posting videos. It's under Fisher Crest. Check me out. So Fisher just started a YouTube channel, and I remember when I first started out, every subscriber helps, every little bit helps. So check him out. He's posting a lot of cool stuff, a lot of dive videos, surf stuff. And if you guys don't know who that is by now, that's actually Brooke's little brother. If you guys like our stuff, you'll definitely like his stuff. It's very good. So check it out. In the description box below, and then now let's go around the table and see what everyone thought. I'd have to say it was probably my favorite fish. I love crab meat and just cooking the full fish, I think preserves a lot of the flavor. Um, we went to dinner today or to lunch at a seafood restaurant and nobody liked their fish. Yeah, Gabby, what did you think about your lunch today? <laughs> it was traumatizing, but it was, I was very surprised with the crab meat because when I was little, I didn't really like crab, but it was actually really good and I'm impressed. And this is coming from a girl who, like the first time we met her, this is Fisher's girlfriend, by the way. She's like, I've never eaten fish that much. And she's like gotten a full blown fish experience now. I mean, she's eaten all sorts of things and she's liked everything so far, right? Yes. And it's because it's fresh. That's what matters. Like they said, our lunch today was horrible. We went to a nice, <laughs> we went to a nice restaurant and no one enjoyed their fish, but Victor helped us regain trust in fish again. Like, like he said, even Gabby who never liked seafood because of the way they prepare everything being fresh, it's amazing. I really liked it too. I really love the crab meat. I'm a big fan of crab also. Um, it's really good. I'd like to have it again. Thanks, Brooke and Victor. Well, we've had flounder, I think, three times in the last week. I made flounder franchise. I made a stuffed flounder last night, and then Victor made flounder tonight, and they were all three delicious. Flounder is a super white meat and just really, really good. The crab meat inside, the flavors were really, really good. I really like that and they were fun to catch too, so we'll definitely be back at it again, catching more flounder. Thank you guys all for saying what you said, and uh, yeah, so flounder, like Brooke said, I think it's one of my favorite fish, just the texture and the way that you can just do things like stuff it. You know, you can't do that with a lot of fish. And um, it was a little bony at times, but some people got more than others, but it was good. It's a I lot of flavor. Lucky. I didn't get one bone. <laughs> but this is definitely a recipe you should try, whether you stuff it with crab or lobster. Like last night, Brooke stuffed her flounder with lobster and it was really good, but she actually filleted it. So it was all, it'd be a more enjoyable experience to eat because you're not picking through bone and stuff. It's more of a clean cut meal. There's kind of two different things. Yeah, we're just trying different things. We've never Never stuffed a flounder before I thought it was crazy so thank you guys so much for watching this video I'll be seeing all you guys my land sharks in that next video Bye.